ladies and gentlemen. It is a big, weird, wild world out there, folks. And here we stand. Al pie del cañón. Ready for anything. I'm Rob Grams. That's the Natch, and you're listening to... The Bravo Show! <laughs> How are we doing out there? How are we doing out there? My beautiful angels. <laughs> Um, if you're just tuning in, it's 8.30 a.m. Central European time on this, the 19th of December, live from the Vaughan Radio Studios. You're listening to The Pro Bo Show. For my international listeners, welcome, welcome. I don't know what time it is for you, but enjoy the show. Strap yourselves in. It's going to be a good one. And for you angelic podcast listeners, I know you're out there from all over the world. How are you doing? I'm your host, as always, Mr. Rob Grams. How are you doing, Natch? Very well, thank you. And you? Very, yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm not doing too, too bad. I had Indian food this weekend. It's like, that's the mark of a good weekend. Um, how about you? How was the weekend? What did you do? Well, I uh, attended to a uh, uh, charity Mercadillo, you say. Oh, and okay. Like, um, like yeah. a little rastro kind of thing. Yeah, in the school of my, my kids. And, and that's it. I think we call that a, um, a garage sale kind of thing or... Um, you could call it a market, I suppose. I mean, what were they selling? Now, every kind of stuff. Uh, food, uh, uh, second-hand books and, you, and yeah. toys. Yeah, we'd call that kind of a market. A, a jumble sale, we would call it in the north of England. A jumble sale. Yeah, okay. Okay, that's nice. It's a nice wholesome activity. I got deeply acquainted with a bottle of rum this weekend. <laughs> and I also ate, um, uh, I ate Indian food. My God. My God. I mean, do you like it? Are you a fan of Indian food, Natch? No, I don't like spicy food. Got you, got you. That's something very Spanish. I noticed. I Coming from England, we adore spicy food in England. And when I came to Spain, one of the first things I noticed, even among the people who said they liked Indian food, they liked Indian food, but not the spice. And for me, the two are so intrinsically linked. And man... <laughs> <laughs> I'm suffering this morning. I don't want to get into details because maybe some of you are eating breakfast. <laughs> I've got nothing but love for you. But damn, it was a hot curry. <laughs> there are curry dishes that don't have spice, I know. You should try um, uh, a korma, um, a chicken korma. It's, it's, um, it's kind of, it tastes like coconut. It's very soft, mild, uh, delicious, delicious dish. Listen to me talking about curry. You can tell I'm going home soon. I'm going home on the 23rd. Oh, I'm going to go spend Christmas with Mama Bo. <laughs> I need it with my soul, man. I can't I can't wait to see her and um, be mi mado, ser mi mado. I can't translate that into English because the English language does not contain mimar, the verb to mimar, dame mimos. <laughs> not, just, like, not just in England where it makes sense because, you know, we don't like to touch, hug or smile at each other. But in, in not even in American. We have similar words, words that hover on the peripheral. Pamper, embrace, but nothing that fully kind of encapsulates what it is to mimar in Spanish. Um, for my international listeners, to mimar, dame mimos, is kind of like to pamper me, to show me love, to, to caress me, to... You know what I mean? You can mimar someone without even physically touching them. It's, it's a concept that we just don't understand <laughs> uh, at least me <laughs> at least british people like what do you actually ask for people to pay attention to you how gross <laughs> we have pedro in the chat how are we doing pedro pedro from instagram good morning nice to see you again nice to be here pedro guys if you want to join pedro and contribute to the um uh, to the to all the all the content that's coming in today's show it's very easy you go to twitch.tv T W I T C H Twitch dot TV barra or forward slash professional bohemian. You don't know how to spell that? Go to Google, type in Bohemio Professional in English, <laughs> and uh, the results will be there for you. So, how are you doing? What we've we got coming up in today's show? Let me tell you. I asked a hundred humans hmm, about clothing today on the walk to work. I asked them about clothing. So we're going to get answers on um, on pockets. <laughs> and then in Complete the News, um, uh, we've got two delicious Complete the News items. We're going to look at some cyberbullying 
and um, and Stephen Tyler from um, from Aerosmith. You an Aerosmith fan, Natch? No, not really. No, and that surprises me because I know you're fan of. I, I know you're a, a lover of all things rock and roll. Yeah, I, I like um, like three songs. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a fan of the group. Yeah, I hear you. I mean, I I'll, I'll be honest. I really do like or liked. Um, Aerosmith, but they're a band. Every band at some point stops evolving musically. And when I started to really appreciate music in my like late teens, when I started to play music myself, mm, Aerosmith kind of stopped evolving. You know what I mean? They stopped evolving with the trends of the time, and yeah, I don't know. That's about the time that, that I start to check out of a band, except for Metallica. Metallica can do no wrong. <laughs> <laughs> they released a new song, actually, Metallica, recently. Yeah, yeah, very, very good as well. So, guys, yeah, if you want to tune into the show and participate live, you can do that on twitch.tv forward slash professional bohemian, or you can do that on my Twitter, Twitter arroba at P-R-O-B-O-H. I am paying attention to it through the show. So all that good stuff, that's all coming up in the second half, my friends. That's all coming up in the second half. Today we have an amazing unpopular opinion. <laughs> it wasn't posed like an unpopular opinion today, Natch. Today, I'm going classic. I'm going to argue against whatever the internet told me is the correct answer. <laughs> it's going to be good. It's going to be good. I'm going to. I, th- I feel like I'm arguing it. I'm arguing the Spanish point of view today. Yo soy español, español. Yeah, I. I, I, I feel like I'm going to. I'm going to access my um, my my Spanish cultural knowledge today. Um, but all that's coming up later. Right now, I'm here. You're here. Natch is here. Let's look at what's going on in the world. Um, <clears throat> Natch, well, the World Cup finals, right? Woof. That's happened. Yeah, that's... that's. Yeah, of course. He's nodding. Yeah, that's done. That's yeah, happened. That's done. That's... Wow. <laughs> the end of the World Cup. <laughs> the end of the World... And wow, what a ride. Those two teams in the final, woof. It was, it was a dramatic... It's a dramatic game. It was a dramatic... But, you know, I feel like... The people, the people who scored the most goals, won, and I feel like that is um, a great roundup to this year's amazing World Cup. Would you agree with that statement, Natch? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what um, uh, what ride? <laughs> Nobody could disagree. <laughs> it was um, it was Argentina and France, right? I I kind of know a little bit. I I, I did out of curiosity. Check out the results before coming on the show today. <laughs> and it was penalties, right? They Argentina won on penalties. Yes. Mm-hmm. Was that dramatic? Was it a dramatic match? Did you it was, feel it was a fantastic match? <coughs> yeah, the, one of the best finals ever. Yeah. yeah. Can I guess you were um, you were you were behind Argentina? No, I I really don't care what happened, but uh, I I wanted Messi to win. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That is like the best football player of history. He. Did. Kind of deserve. It. I feel like every generation says that. Oh no, he is the best footballer in the history of football. <laughs> like every generation has their best footballer well, yeah, ever. Maybe, maybe it's the best, definitely of our generation. Yeah. Mm. Who was the last? Ronaldo, Ronaldo was he the last best of our generation? Nah. No. Nah. 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 Ro- Ronaldo. Like, um, been closer. No. 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 Oh, uh, just a question. Ronaldo and Ronaldinho are two different people, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. And it's not one is not <laughs> neither <laughs> of the other. One. No, <laughs> They're no. not the same. It's not like Doctor Evil and Mini Me. <laughs> no, no, no. No. Okay. I mean, I knew that. I knew that. I was just making sure you knew. <laughs> oh, football! <laughs> it's a beautiful game. It's a beautiful game, Natch. So there you go. The World Cup fever is over. How are you feeling? Do you, are we left satisfied by by this year's tournament? I I I don't know. I I've seen only Spain matches and a couple more, and oh. not even the whole games. So yeah, yeah. Not very interested this year. So when why not? If you're Argentinian out there, um, congratulations. If you're French, commiserations. But you did very well. You came in second. You know, um, I didn't watch the match because I don't care. <laughs> All right. What else is going on in the world? You know, someone said to me, Natch. Someone said to me last week, did um, Ron. You need to stop talking about Elon Musk and Twitter because it's become the Elon Musk Twitter show, not the Pro Bowl show. And I appreciate your comments, dear listener. So what's coming up into, what else has been happening today? Well, Elon Musk on Twitter, right? 
<laughs> he released the poll, my friends. Um, uh, un encuesta, right? A poll. He released a poll. Do you, can you guess what the poll is about, Natch? I'll, I'll read it to you. Uh, should I step down, uh, um, Demitir, as the head of Twitter? I will abide by the ro- results of this poll. There are three hours left. And yes is winning by 57%. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, how many people have voted on this poll? Um, 14.3 million. <laughs> do you think he's going to do it? Do you think he's going to abide by it? I think he will, you know. He's, he he has had a rough couple of weeks, Elon. He was um, He was a guest on Dave Chappelle's live show. Did you hear about this? So Dave Chappelle, um, a very, very famous, renowned American comedian, was doing a live show. I can't remember where it was, but he he introduced Elon Musk onto the stage and the crowd booed. Boo. I don't know how you say that in Spanish. How do you say booing someone in Spanish? Abuchear. Abuchear. So they they booed him um, practically off stage. They practically booed him off stage. (laughs) Um, And then when that happened... Um, I think that was the moment Elon Musk turned into a supervillain. I think that's the moment he turned into Lex Luthor. Because <laughs> he started banning accounts on um, uh, on Twitter. Um, he banned an account that f- um, that is... The only thing the account does is follow where Elon Musk's private jet is. And he banned that account. <laughs> then he banned a lot of journalists who were reporting about that ban. He banned a, a, like a Washington Post journalist, which is practically unheard of. Journalists doing journalism, you know, reporting on things that happen. So he's not having a very good week. And I think it's culminated with this, with him thinking, you know, maybe I'm not, maybe I don't have the material necessary to um, to run a social media empire or a social media network. Um, and I will be interested to see how this interested to see how this develops. Whether he's actually going to uh, going to step down as the head of Twitter or not, and um, because he is still the CEO of um, of Tesla, apparently, but apparently um, other shareholders shareholders in Tesla are saying, "Well, he's never here. He's he's doing Twitter all the time." <laughs> um, what else is going on today? Um, Henry Cavill, Henry Cavill. You know, how can I say this? I'm kind of man crush. I've got a man crush on Henry Cavill. I think I've got a, I've got a, he is everything I want in a husband. <laughs> um, look, the dude's a, he, the dude's a gamer. He's a gamer. He built his own PC. He's a nerd like I am. He's um, uh, he's the Witcher. He's been Superman. Well, he's no longer the Witcher. He's he's kind of stepped aside from that. Superman, he's a mega geek. Henry Cavill, we salute you. We salute you. Um, <laughs> I'm not gay, but if I am gay at any point in time, Henry, reach out. <laughs> um, so, yeah, my man crush, Henry Cavill, has had a hell of a couple of weeks, Natch. He's had a hell of a couple of weeks. I don't know if you've heard about all the drama. So, in October, Warner Brothers said, go ahead and tell everybody that you're still Superman. You're going to be in the Black Adam film right at the end. I won't give you any spoilers, but right at the end, you're going to be there. And it's safe to say you are our Superman. Go ahead and tell everyone you are our Superman. So in October, a good soldier, Mr. Henry Cavill, um, uh, my man crush, (laughs) released um, a post saying, guys, it's nice to be back as Superman. You know, let's look forward to the, the journey we're going to take together. Me as your Superman, and, and everyone delighted because I think I think Henry Cavill was a great Superman. I don't think he was maybe working in the best movies as Superman, but he was a good Superman. Same with uh, Ben Affleck. Well, <clears throat> since then, Warner hired James Gunn and another producer to to lead their comic book division, um, DC movies, and um, and and James Gunn is he's planning another Superman movie but not starring Henry Cavill. And um, earlier this week, Paul, or earlier, later last week, I should say, Paul Henry Cavill had to had to release the statement that, well, yeah, I just had a meeting with James Gunn and it appears I'm no longer Superman. How embarrassing for Henry Cavill. Um, and then we're not going to get him in The Witcher because he stepped down from The Witcher. 
obviously before the news about Superman, and maybe maybe that would have influenced his decision somewhat. Um, so yeah, it, it sucks to be um, it sucks to be Henry Cavill, man. It sucks to be that millionaire, super good looking buff Henry Cavill. I feel so sorry for him. I bet he's just crying into millions of dollars right now. <laughs> it makes me sad for him. <laughs> um, so so why are we talking about this? Um, well, because The Witcher is is returning. He's going to be in this new season of The Witcher. But no, um, Amazon recently signed um, a deal to bring the fantasy war game, or the fantasy game Warhammer. Have you heard of war, Warhammer 40k? No. no. It's kind of like a tabletop game, and you kind of compete. in an, It's like set in humanity's distant future. And Henry Cavill is on board to play one cap to play a character and as a producer. The only thing that worries about me about this is that Amazon is in charge of it. Do you know what I mean? Do you, oh, Lord of the Rings, uh, the Rings of Power. <laughs> it was so bad. What they've done with Cavill is outrageous. Yeah, I agree, Pedro. I agree, Pedro from Instagram talking to me on the chat. I think it's outrageous. I think the poor guy, the poor guy. You know what I mean? I hope he got paid well for that cameo he did in um, in Black Adam. He deserves it. And you know what I mean? I would have continued watching Cavill as Superman. You know what I mean? He looks like a Superman. He looks like a Superman. He's big, buff. You know? I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. I mean, I, the, the thing is, I'm interested in seeing what James Gunn is going to bring to the table. I'm a big fan of all his movies. I loved um, the Guardians of the Galaxy. Did you watch the Christmas special yet, Natch? No, not yet. Mm. Ah, really good. Really, it's really good. I enjoyed it anyway. It's silly and short, but very, very entertaining. Um, and so, yeah, Warhammer is, um, if you're a tabletop fan and you know of the game Warhammer, we're having such a, a resurgence in, in geek gaming um, in the media. It's, it's interesting to witness. So Warhammer 40K is, um, is coming to screens. A big screen is going, we're going to have movies and a TV series. Both are quite worrying to me, given um, Amazon's track history when it comes to these kind of fantasy properties. Because, yeah, Rings of Power was a little bit of a disaster. I was with it. I was enjoying it right up until the end. I'm not going to give you any spoilers, but it kind of sucked. <laughs> All right. All right. So that's what's going on in the world today. There is more. There is more. I, 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 did, I did expect that our, our chat about the World Cup would go on for longer, but then I realized, Natch, I don't know anything about football. Nothing. <laughs> All right. So let's go to today's unpopular opinion unpopular opinion what is an unpopular opinion my friends allow me to illuminate you this is where i need you in the chat not just pedro i know there are more of you watching i need you to say hello and jump into the chat and interact with me today because our unpopular opinion has been launched today we're going classic with the unpopular opinion i um i asked the question um, I prefer my guests to arrive blank to my party, late or early. And then a part two, I prefer to arrive blank to a party, late or early. So, you know, how would you prefer your guests to arrive if you were throwing a party? Would you prefer them to arrive late or early? And you yourself as an attendee, would you r rather arrive late or early? So, Natch. Here's my question to you. You're throwing a party. It's the Natch Christmas party. Everyone's going. Would you rather your guests arrive late or early? Late. Ah, really? Yes, because I'm always <laughs> late preparing things, so I, I don't want to... <laughs> if somebody want comes in time, is is No, no. no. Just have nada preparado. And you're going to a party. Would you rather arrive late or early? Well, late as well. Late as well. Mm-hmm. Do you think um, the vote agrees with you today? Well, I guess the vote is you organize it, you want everybody to come early, and, <laughs> and you go late to, to everybody else. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to be honest with you. That is exactly what I expected in the vote today. And more people voted on this poll than they have voted in a long time. So I assume this is something that people either care about or were interested in voicing an opinion about. Most people said that I prefer my guests to arrive early. Most people, it was 53-47. So it's just by a very slim margin, but still, most people said early. And this surprised me. I prefer to arrive to a, to a party early as well. 
by the same percentage, 52%. So today, my friends, today, I'm going to explain to you why you should arrive late. <laughs> Pedro, what, um, uh, oh, sorry, no, I read that one. Rafelka, late, be late and, and guess late too. I'd rather people arrive early in order to help out a little bit, says Urs. Great comment. Thank you, Rafelka. Urs, welcome to the show, my friends. Okay. I live in Spain, friends. I live in Spain. The Spanish way. Punctuality means arriving only 15 minutes late. <laughs> that you like English people, if you're if you're planning an event with Spanish friends, that's how it works. You tell them 15 to 30 minutes earlier than you want them to arrive because that's how it works it's a social contract that and and ironically i feel like to me that that takes away a lot of anxiety about whether people will come whether they won't come here's the thing you arrive you arrive, you go to a party i am one of those people that will arrive early and i've done it in the past you know, you don't really know the people that are going. You don't know what time to arrive. So you just think, hey, sod it. I'm going to get there at the time that they say, and you're the only person there for at least half an hour. Eating like awkward, awkwardly, standing by the t- food table, sipping on a punch. I think you say ponche in Spanish, right? <laughs> standing by the punch, eating the nibbles, the finger food, cheese what's it, the... <laughs> Just awkwardly waiting for other people to arrive. And you know your friends aren't going to be there on time. You know the the, the organiser of the party is awkward. They don't want to ask you to help. You're supposed to be having a good time. But you're there on your own, like a plant, like a potato. And it's just awkward. It's just awkward. You don't want that. I don't even think the hosts want that. If I'm throwing a party and someone arrives early, I'm almost a little bit insulted. Like, didn't you read what, what I said? This is Spain, man. Now I have to entertain you on your own. When I could be relying on the rest of my guests to entertain you. Selfish. Selfish. Pedro says, I voted um, early in both questions. I have a lot of friends who are not Spanish, so I tend to be prepared to host them on time. I find it disrespectful to be late. Yeah, me too, said, uh, me too, Pedro. Except for in the occasions of a party. Except for a party. Because I will admit, I am not... <laughs> I prefer to arrive at least 30 minutes late to any party. Because it means I have to spend less time around people, around other humans. <laughs> um, 15 minutes is okay, says Pedro. Give me some margin to get ready. More than 15 minutes is disrespectful. Okay. Well, there is actually data on this, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, save that for the second half of the show. Here's my thinking, friends. Um, as the internet voted early, both for guests to arrive and for that person themselves to arrive what you're doing is you're putting extra pressure on the host if you arrive early you know i mean the party starts at 8 30 you arrive at eight o'clock then you're not actually helping all you're doing is in the way because when you're planning something you plan with the hands that you have to get everything done by a certain time so what you're going to be doing sat there in the so on the sofa watching tv you know making this person feel anxious about how entertained you are am i throwing a bad party no no my friends and neither do I, as a guest to a party, want to give that kind of impression, pass that in discomfort onto the person who was kind enough to invite me. No, I will show up 15, 20, 30 minutes late, just as people are starting to arrive, to add to the ambience, not to drain it of all the fun before anyone's gotten there. You know, not to eat the food before anyone's gotten there, not to drink the punch and the beers before anyone has gotten there. I just think that's rude. I mean, we're coming up to the seasons of parties, guys. Why not show the appropriate respect to the people who are hosting you by not getting there early or getting there on time? You know, let the host have a little bit of a few extra minutes to make things a little bit more special. Why would you Why would you put extra pressure on them by, by being too British about it? Why would you do that? This is Spain, friends. Spain is different. <laughs> Rafelka, if you arrive early, maybe the people who uh, throw the party are not even there. This is Spain. Yeah, that's another good point. In Spain, maybe even the hosts haven't turned up. Yes, when I say early, I mean about 15 minutes. Yeah. 15 minutes early is too much. On time is too early. 
15 minutes late. There's a social contract. Whenever you invite someone to a party, you don't expect them to get there on time. Natch, have you ever invited someone to a party that is in your house or in a special place and expected them to get there on time? No, because you know the party starts at this time. So you, as a responsible adult, you know, you need to get here after it started. That's your job. Not be there at the start. This isn't a race. You know, it's not a meal. We don't have, we're not waiting on you to order. No, we're going to drink and have some fun. The party starts at this time. Get here when you want. Getting here early is just as disrespectful as getting here late. When it comes to a party. Because I agree in punctuality in every other simple, um, in every other terms. But not when it comes to a social party. There you go. That's my argument, friends. It's better to arrive late and for other people to arrive late to a party. But I'm not going to tell you what's right or wrong, guys. You're going to tell me in the poll that I will post in the chat. Um, And my friends, I will be back in four short minutes and we'll bring this to a conclusion. Guys, a lot of things you could be doing today. Instead of doing those things, you're here listening to me and it means the absolute world. See you soon, guys. Hey, guys, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash professional bohemian. There you'll find VODs of the episodes as they are recorded live, blogs, vlogs, and behind the scenes content. If you'd like to watch the show live, you can do so on twitch.tv forward slash professional bohemian. And you can participate in the polls we use in the show on Instagram at professional bohemian or Twitter at probo, P R O B O H. Okay, on with the show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. You're listening to the Pro Bowl Show, and we are currently live on Vaughn Radio at 9 a.m. Central European time. How are you doing, my friends? Um, If you're just tuning in, wow, you've missed a hell of a show. So far, we've been speaking about, we had a very in-depth, detailed look at the World Cup finals. (laughs) We um, uh, we also took a little, uh, we dipped our toes, nuestros um, dedos del del, um, pie. We dipped our toes in the water of Elon Musk's recent drama with Twitter. (laughs) So I kept it short for those of you who tell me I'm too obsessed with Elon Musk. Um, We looked at a little bit of the drama around um, Henry Cavill. Poor Henry Cavill being disrespected, in my eyes, by um, Warner Brothers. And um, how he um, his next geek fantasy role may be in the Warhammer 40,000 series and movies that are uh, being developed by Amazon. Yeah, a bit worrying given Amazon's track rest record with fantasy, um, fantasy drama. But hey, let's see. We hope for the best, right? And then we went into today's unpopular opinion. Which was, is it better to arrive late or early to a party? Um, We'll get to the um, results of that poll in a second. People are just finishing voting. Thank you guys for voting. I do appreciate it. Um, I was arguing that late. If you guys want proof that people said early on my social media, if you want to interact with the unpopular opinions before they happen, you can do that on um, my Instagram account, Professional Bohemian. Bohemio Professional. Arroba Professional Bohemian. And um, people prefer their guests to arrive early, and they prefer to arrive early themselves to a party. That's what the, um, it was, the, both answers were by a very slim margin. Um, so I tried to convince you all that the way to go was late. Let's see if people are agreed with me in the chat. I did mention through my chat that there, there, there is actually some data on this, Natch. There's actually some data on this. Is When is the correct time to arrive to a party? Okay, so I found um, uh, towardsdatascience.com. <laughs> Whenever in doubt, look for the data scientists. They know the answer. <laughs> uh, Pedro says, hang on. It also depends on how many people are invited. If you're one out of many, I guess being late doesn't matter. But if you're one of the guests of honor, punctuality is appreciated. Pedro has hit the nail on the head here. Because in this um, data that I found, they separate, um, not only do they ask the questions, when is the earliest you would like your guests to arrive? When is the latest you would like to guess your guests to arrive? And what is the ideal time for a guest to arrive? They also separate it between these three things. A small house party where you would be, I imagine, one of five or six guests, you know, it's a meal maybe. Um, an early house party or a big house party. Okay. 
So, here's how people voted. This is um, a poll conducted, it was a small sample size, 71 people. Um, okay, here we go. A regular house party between 20 and 50 people. A small house party between 10 and 20 people. And an early house party between 20 and 50 people. Okay, so this is when people, this is what people said. What is the ideal ti- um, time you would like your average guest to arrive? And you, Natch, you said you'd rather they arrive late, right? F- 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour? What, what do you say? Nah, 15, 20 minutes. 15, 20 minutes. Natch, can I tell you? In this data, you are completely correct. That is 100% what people wanted. Yeah, f- apparently around 15 minutes late is the perfect time to arrive to a party. Around 15 minutes late. Um, when is the earliest you'd want guests to start arriving? Here it was a complete um, it was a complete uh, mix. What's the earliest you would ra- like people to arrive? They say no more than 15 minutes early to on time, but they would prefer 15 minutes late. And what is the latest you would like your guests to arrive by? The, at the absolute latest, one and a half hours. <laughs> In all three instances of the three kinds of in the three kinds of um, uh, of party, uh, a small, medium, or large house party. So those of you who said late, the data is with us. That's what people appreciate. And remember, there's a big difference, I think, between a party and real life. You know, a, a date, <laughs> a job interview. There, are, Like in the rest of your life, you should be punctual. But there is a weird social contract around parties where a party has a start time and you're not expected to be there when the party starts but yes when the party is going does that make sense so how did our audience how did our live audience what did they say because they are the ones who tell us the correct answer not the internet not me not natch let's get a drum roll natch 75 percent of our live audience natch said it's better to arrive late yeah it's better to arrive late, and thanks to TowardsDataScience.com, we know the ideal time is 15 minutes late, and God help you arrive no later than an hour and a half. I mean, the more <laughs> yeah, I don't know if this was conducted by Spanish people. I have a feeling that yes. Um, but no, overwhelmingly, 15, um, 15 minutes is the appropriate amount of lateness um, anything over an hour to an hour and a half is unacceptable. And there you go, guys. It, here's Uncle Rob just making your Christmas parties a little more ethically sound. <laughs> yeah, be 15 minutes late, but no more than that. There you go. Doesn't that take, take a lot of the mystery out of it, Natch? I think it does. <laughs> All right, let's go to 100 Humans. <laughs> Oh my god, friends, it was a long walk to work across snow-capped mountains and through river valleys, and on that walk, I encountered a hundred humans, and I asked them all a question. I asked them to name something that you wear that never comes with pockets. Woo! Bolsillos. I asked a hundred humans to name something that you wear that never comes with pockets. I asked them that. They gave me their answers. I have the top seven answers here. Your job in the chat is to identify those top seven answers. What is something that you wear that never comes with pockets? Um, Rafelka says, um, let's see. Uh, it also depends on if who hosts the party is your best friend then you're expected to arrive on time. That's true. That's true, because I'll be honest, the times I've thrown a party, I've expected my best friend to be there with me preparing the party. You know, that moral support. (laughs) In case nobody comes, then we can drink the alcohol together. (laughs) Okay, so I asked them to name something you wear that never comes with pockets. Um, I'm going to go quickly to Natch first. What do you think, Natch? Shoes. Shoes. Shoes never come with pockets. Isn't a shoe a pocket for your feet? Is shoes there? 
Name something you wear that never comes with pockets. Natch's shoes. It's there, Natch. Well done. Well done, sir. What did I, I didn't expect less from the Oracle? I didn't expect less. Yeah, shoes is there. Nine of a hundred humans said shoes. It's in fourth place. Well done. Pedro says a hat. A gorro. Again, isn't a hat just a pocket for your head, Natch? Isn't it? Isn't everything a pocket? <laughs> I'm just going to put my head in a pocket. Or you're going to wear a hat. Whatever. Is a hat there? Do you think? Do you think that's there, Natch? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It is there. Well done. <laughs> Three of a hundred humans. Well done, Pedro. Three of a... No, sorry. Twelve of a hundred humans said hat. Something that you will wear that never has a pocket. A hat. Well done. I, I feel like we're missing an opportunity there. I feel like we're missing a bit of an opportunity there. Wouldn't it be like super... Um, uh, wouldn't it be super useful to have pockets in your hat? Why the hell not? You know, make your head a little bit heavier, but dude, my loose change being on my head. I don't know. I'm thinking that's a way of the future. Pocket hat. Okay, nobody write that. Nobody go inventing. I'm going to, you know, it's the Christmas 2023 item of choice. The pocket hat. Dude, I would keep my wallet on my head. Much harder to pickpocket. Much harder to steal from you if you're wearing your wallet on your head. I don't know, man. I think we're missing a trick here. So, hat is there. Third place, 1,200 humans. Well done, Pedro. Okay, Rafelka says socks. Socks. Calcetines. Socks. Hmm. I'm going to say it again, Natch. Isn't a sock just a pocket for your feet? <laughs> no, no, no. Keep the applause going. It's there. It's there. Your instincts were right, Natch. The hundred humans, your instincts were right. Bang on, as always. 22 of them said, yes, socks. It's something I wear often that never comes with pockets in second place. That was Rafelka. Well done. Well done, sir. Um, okay. Um, let's see. Ur says, could it be a scarf? A scarf? A bufanda? Scarf? Dude, my Spanish is on fire today, Natch. Fire. A bufanda scarf. <laughs> Nivelazo. <laughs> Um, is it there? No, it's not. Sorry. Scarf is not there. Bufanda is not there. Although they don't come with pockets. And again, I think we're missing a trick. You know? I, I'm sick of having... Like, I, I wear... I carry everything. Are you anything like me, Natch? Do you carry everything in your pockets? Yes. Mm -hmm. I spent a little bit of time wearing kind of... Um, wearing like a little bag and put everything in my little bag. But I'm, I just... <laughs> I'm a pocket person. And then all my jeans are ruined because I sit down and then just by my, where my pockets are, everything bulges out. I have a bad back because I sit on my wallet and my spine is twisted. But what are you going to do? It's the nature of it. And perhaps if my hat and scarf had pockets, it wouldn't be an issue. Who knows? Okay, here we go. Pedro says, a helmet. A helmet. Hmm. Helmet is kind of similar to um, to hat, Pedro. Hmm. Pe uh, Rafaelka says, 007, James Bond's shoe come with pockets for knives. <laughs> the 100 humans didn't think so, Rafaelka. Dude, I'm all about pockets on everything. That's what I think. Pockets on everything. Okay. Um, underwear. Hmm. Underwear. Well, we said, um, yeah, okay. Underwear, says Pedro. So I'm thinking he means gayumbos, right? Cal, um, oh, come on, city thing. Um, Cal, ah! See, my Spanish is too ca ca del calle because I know Gayumbo and I can't remember how to say the real word. Calzoncillo. There you go. Okay, underwear. Is it there? Underwear. Does it contain pockets? Traditionally, no. But did the hundred humans agree with Pedro? Yes, they did. <laughs> Oh, and Pedro is the number one answer, my God! 39 of the 100 humans said underwear. 39 of them. Well, good job. Good job. 39 of the 100 humans said underwear. Although, I'm sorry, again, wouldn't it be great? 
Isn't underwear really just a pocket for your private parts? <laughs> you know? You know, what do you need to carry inside of it for it to be a pocket? I think socks are just pockets for your feet. I'm going to be honest with you. The 100 humans don't know anything. No, actually, the 100 humans don't know anything today. Um, okay. You guys are missing three answers. Only three answers. Um, okay, so Pedro. I don't know. Natch is a little bit busy, so we, we, we might have to do without him for this one. I know, he's here, he's here. Um, Pedro says gloves, guantes, gloves. Again, aren't they just pockets for your hands? <laughs> gloves. Is gloves there? Yes, it is! Oh, my God! I never thought you'd get that one. I never thought you'd get that one. It was kind of not an obvious answer to me. Three of 100 humans said gloves. It's in seventh place. Well done, well done. Okay, ties, says Rafelka. A tie. A tie. Um, oof, corbata? No. Come on, say you say tie, Natch. Did I say it right? Nivel oh, look at that. Oh, my God. That's a nice surprise. See, sometimes my lizard brain knows more Spanish than I think it does. Okay, so a tie. Is a tie still there? Is a tie there? No, it's not. It's not there. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm going to give you some clues. Because two answers left, and they're both difficult to get. You wear this on your wrist. You wear this on your wrist. It has a function. Most clothes, their only function are, uh, is to keep you warm, right? Or to hide your body. This item that you would wear on your wrist has a different function. It doesn't have pockets. Pedro says a belt. He's wearing it on his wrist. I don't want to know what you do in the evening. You and Mrs. Pedro from Instagram. <laughs> belt is not there. It's not there. It's a, great, it's a great answer, Pedro, but it's not there. Okay, Natch, something you wear on your, on your wrist that what? serves... Ooh, a watch. Is it there? Yes, it is. Well done. <clears throat> that was our sixth place answer with three of 100 humans, and there's just one more. There's just one more. Arguably, these would be really useful if they had pockets, but they do not, sir. It's not clothes. They're, they're, they're not an item of clothing you wear all year round. We've mentioned gloves and scarves in today's show. We've mentioned gloves and scarves. But I'm looking for something that is an item of clothing for a different part of the year, not a cold one. This is an item of clothing that is, again, about utility. You're not wearing it going shopping. You're not wearing it walking down the street. You're wearing it because you're engaging in a certain activity or in a certain place, usually by the coast or by a body of water. What item of clothing does not have pockets? An item of clothing that is designed perhaps to get wet. Does anybody know? Rafael Cassis glasses. It's glasses there. It's not. Sorry. Glasses is not there. But it's been, I'll tell you whose round it was today, Natch. It was Pedro's round. Pedro did incredibly well today. And he's going to finish us up by, by making the suggestion swimsuit. A swimsuit. Bañera. No? How do you say it? Bañador. Bañador. God damn it. Bañera is the bathroom. <laughs> uh. <laughs> they don't have pockets, though. <laughs> to be fair, bathrooms don't have pockets. So, you know, whatever. <laughs> Bañador, of course. <laughs> it's early in the morning. Come on. <laughs> so, Bañador, swimsuit. Is it there? Yes, it is. <laughs> that was the last of them that was it swimsuit you need a few clues guys but you did very well where do you find these surveys i'm intrigued about that what do you mean where do i find them Urs? every morning i have a long walk to work across snow-capped mountains and through river valleys and on the way i encounter 100 i don't know what people don't understand about that natch it's like people don't believe me i don't get it <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's go through the list. In position number seven. When I asked 100 humans what they wear that never have pockets, they said, in position number seven, glasses. Oh, no, gloves. Sorry, my bad. Gloves. In position number six was a watch. Reloj. A watch. In position number five, banyador. 
<laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Banyador, a swimsuit is there with seven of a hundred humans in fifth place. In position number four was shoes. Your shoes don't have pockets, even though they are pockets for your feet. Let's be honest. They don't have pockets. Although, you know, that's another great place. I would love to keep my credit cards on my shoes. You know what I mean? That would be a great place for them. All right. In position number three was hat. Gorro or gorra. Hat. In position number two. Calcetines, socks. And finally, our number one answer was underwear. Well done, Pedro. <laughs> Pedro killing it today. He's killing it. Guys, guys, you all did really well. Rafelka, Urs, there are a ton of people watching and only a few of them participating. And they're the real heroes. Pedro, Rafelka, Urs, Natch. Guys, you're killing it today. Let's go. To complete the news. Complete the news. Oh, here we go. Here we go, guys. Complete the news. We've got two news items. How does this work? I will give you a news headline. Un titular, I think you say. Of, um, of oh, can you oh love my God. Um, I will give you a, a news headline um, with some information missing. Your job is to complete the news from the options that I give you. Okay, I'll give you three options. If you're one of the people who are watching the show and not interacting on twitch.tv forward slash professional bohemians, this is your moment because all you have to write is A, B or C. So here we go. First piece of news. Um, A teen, so a teenager, a teenager finds out an anonymous internet bully who harassed her for a year was actually blank. So a teenager discovers that a bully, an anonymous bully on the internet, who had been harassing her for a year, was actually blank. Is it A, a bot? Is it B, her mom? Or is it C, her teacher? A teen finds out an anonymous bully who had harassed her for a year. Harassed. Harassed her for a year was actually blank. A, a bot. B, her mom. C, her teacher. A, B, or C. Guys in the chat. Answers are coming in slowly. What do you think, Natch? What's your take? Her teacher. You think a teacher? Woo! (laughs) If you were a teacher and you had a bad student, would you bully them online? (laughs) Your your way to get revenge, you know. <laughs> They'll never know it's me. They'll never know. <laughs> Woof. So you say teacher Natch. Answer C. The chat is split for the first time ever. I salute all of you. Um, everybody is is saying a different answer. Rafelka is saying A. Um, a bot. Uh, where are we? Um, Pedro says B. I oh, know Urs hasn't answered yet. Be her mom, and you say teacher. Natch, let's get a drum roll. A teen finds out that an anonymous bully who harassed her for a year was actually her mom. (laughs) What a world! What a world. C wouldn't be news, a teacher. Ah, true story. Okay, so B. All right, all right. I like the way you think, Pedro from Instagram. I like the way you think, sir. Okay, a Michigan woman has been hit with felony charges amid accusations that she catfished and cyberbullied her own teenage daughter for an entire year. Um, uh, This woman from Mount Pleasant, Michigan, was charged earlier this week following a year-long investigation which began with um, uh, the Beale City Schools received a complaint about cyber bullying. And she was bullying her own daughter. Unbelievable. Guys, as always, the links that I use in the show today and always, they go on my Patreon. So if you're a member of my Patreon community, Patreon forward slash Professional Bohemian, you can read more about this news for yourself. But I want to get to the second piece of news we've got today, Natch. So let's move on. Okay, piece of news number two. Steven Tyler from Aerosmith, El Cantante, the singer. Steven Tyler Tyler thinks all blank songs sound the same. Hmm. Steven Tyler, the singer from Aerosmith, 
Steven Tyler thinks all blank songs sound the same. Is it is the answer A, Taylor Swift, B, Black Eyed Peas, or C, Metallica? Taylor Smith, uh, Taylor Smith. <laughs> um, Steven Tyler recently came out and said, said, all blank songs sound the same. Is he talking about Taylor Swift, Black Eyed Peas, or Metallica? A, B, or C, Taylor Swift, Black Eyed Peas, or Metallica? Woo, it's a tough one. What do you think, Natch? Metallica. Woo, why Metallica? They're the same genre, kind of. Yeah, that's what I thought, but uh, Taylor Swift would be like the... He's probably never even heard of Taylor Swift. Yeah. In his rock and roll. In his rock and roll life, right? Mm -hmm. And Black Eyed Peas? Got well, all that junk inside that be. trunk? Could be. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, Metallica, I don't want to turn you off your answer. That's answer number C, Metallica says Natch. Um, Pedro says A. And Rafelka, A is Taylor Swift. Rafelka saying C as well. He agrees with you, Natch. Metallica. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Let's get a drum roll. Steven Tyler thinks all Metallica songs sound the same. This is coming from wearethepit.com, um, a rock music publication. Um, in his autobiography, Does the Noise in My Head Bother You? Aerosmith frontman, El Cantante, a leader, um, Steven Tyler got on the defense about always changing up the Aerosmith musical formula. Even though he maintained that Aerosmith liked to reach new sounds on every record, he also felt the need to drag Metallica through the mud saying this. This is the quote. You can't put your finger on what we do because we have a lot of different kinds of music. Unlike Metallica. Oh, Steven. Unlike Metallica, which does only one genre. Um, have you ever heard a slow Metallica song? Yes, nothing else matters, Stephen. Go to hell. Have you ever heard a slow Metallica song, he says? Is there um, one that you could dance to at a prom? Yes, all of them. Stephen Tyler, go to hell. Um, if, you ask them, um, uh, if you ask them, they'd go, why would we? So there you go. There's Stephen Tyler throwing some mud on my favorite band. Stephen, we can all live together. We can all be happy together. No need to go insulting my favorite band in the world. I like um, Aerosmith too. All right, friends, that's all we've got time for today. Um, it's been a pleasure. It's been an honor. So many things you could have been doing today. Instead of doing those things, you hung out with me and it means the absolute world. I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow.